Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. It's my hope that what you learn on this channel will help you survive these relationships, make better decisions in them, and ideally avoid them in the first place. If you are interested in a deeper dive into healing, please go to the video notes, click the link, and you'll get more information about our healing program. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you end up liking this video, give us a little bit of that thumbs up. Give me a little validation to keep going. Today, we're going to talk about toxic text messages. And specifically, what we're going to talk about is that a lot of these toxic text messages or emails have a very classical structure. So let's break that down. So I'm going to ask you all a stupid question because I know if this was a poll, I'd get 100% yes. But have you ever gotten a toxic, but have you ever gotten a toxic text message from a narcissist? So we don't need to do a poll because I'm going to close to 100% yes on that. Maybe the better question to get a yes or no on in the comments is how recently have you received such a message? I would guess in the last 24 hours. And more importantly, what are some of the patterns you see in those texts or emails? After some recent conversations with people who were experiencing multiple narcissistic relationships, one thing became clear, that these text messages have a sort of a unique kind of structure. But now not all messages from them are like this, but there's sort of this sort of narcissistic haiku, a three-part structure that toxic, toxic text messages or emails have. So let me give you a few examples. Some I've created, some people have shown me, some I've gotten. So here's an example. Hey, I'm reaching out to you to find out what you want me to do with your stuff. I hope you don't think you can get away with leaving it here. Hey, I also know it's your birthday. I hope you have an amazing day. Here's another one. We were trying to figure out if you're coming to your aunt's birthday this weekend, but your sister said you're traveling for work. Auntie is quite ill, but you've always chosen work over family so we don't expect to see you. Hope you have a great trip. Or another one. Here's another one. Hey, happy Saturday and happy summer. I just wanted to remind you again that the towels are kept in the laundry room. I do remember that from last summer. I hope nobody ever hurts you the way you hurt me. I hope you never have to look into the abyss of a summer weekend and feel this way. I can't believe I'm not there with you. I can't believe you are able to go there without me. Have fun at the beach. I know how much you love the sunrise and the shells. Or another one could be, this project is really important. I feel really unappreciated so far though. And I have no problem telling people that you are a hypocrite and you aren't really who you say you are. So let's try to get this done. You do some of the best work at this kind of stuff. So I'm sure it will be amazing. And I'm sure we will figure it all out. I believe in the work and I want to bring my authentic self to the work. So as you think about these messages, these messages with their sort of three parts to them, I'm sure you're already sort of noticing a little bit of a pattern, right? These toxic messages are a sandwich, sort of a narcissistic text message sandwich, a toxic, like I said, three-part haiku. They start with a reason to reach out, the towels, the project, whatever it is. Then there's some sort of manipulative or menacing statement. Then the third part, the final part, is a statement that is supposed to make them look good or virtuous, like happy birthday or hope you have fun. Getting messages like this is as confusing as hell. The opener of these messages is often quite declarative or informative or it's asking for information. So you read that. Then the next part is passive or overtly aggressive. It's a dig. Now you're unsettled reading this. Then there's the closer, which after being unsettled by that middle part, that dig, it can be even more confusing where they're saying, have a happy birthday, have fun with the sunset or whatever. You will find yourself reading these toxic messages repeatedly. Most people get sort of stuck in the middle of the toxic message sandwich, right? That middle part of the message where there is the veiled threat or the passive aggressive slap or the victimized yammering. It's like a tidy little gaslight 
sent by text message. Here's the rub and here's the thing. There is no way to respond to these text messages. If you are brief in your response to them, then they will bait you. If you try to engage, now you are down the rabbit hole. If you don't reply, well, that may be the best path of all because there really is nothing that can be said to confusing messages like this. But I promise you this, there will still be hell to pay if you don't respond. So what's the mantra now? I wish we were all in the same room all together now. What's the mantra of these relationships? You can't win. I am not saying that all text message communications or email communications from narcissistic or antagonistic people are like this. Sometimes the messages just go from mean to meaner. But this structure, sort of informational, aggressive, you know, self-righteous, the front and back seeming normal and nice, the middle is awful. Again, that, that uncomfortable structure, sometimes it can be all this stuff sort of mixed up and it's more than three parts. It's like 15 parts. The need for antagonistic people to seem virtuous or good in the eyes of other people can mean that they will say all kinds of terrible things to you in a message, but sign off with have a nice day, or I wish you love and light or some other kind of nonsense, or I hope you're happy. No, they don't wish you're happy. Ultimately, they want to get in the dig, but preserve that good image of themselves to themselves. And if you were to push back on how mean the middle part of the message is, they will just gaslight you, so it's best to not even bring it up. Or they will tell you that you are suspicious if you are calling them out on what was just a solicitous message or a birthday message, once again, you're painted as the dysfunctional one. These toxic three-part messages, and like I said, they can be longer, six parts, nine parts, 15 parts, but that idea of a sandwich really captures what these messages are about. Info, and then toxic, and then self-righteous. They really get into why these relationships can feel so unsettling. These messages reinforce the trauma bond. You're like, is this good, or is this bad, or is this good? And if you are prone to justification and there are two normal and one toxic thing in the same message, you may judge yourself for being too sensitive or critical for taking umbrage or offense at the message. You're like, oh, maybe they didn't mean it because they did tell me happy birthday. The one thing that these messages make clear is that all communication with antagonistic people always leaves us confused, off balance, and uncomfortable. That allows them to maintain their narrative and the rest of us always unsettled. So I would be curious to hear if any of you have ever gotten these sort of toxic three-part messages with this sort of this construction. I know I have tons of them and many people have shared them with me. So how about I send you a message? I hope all of you enjoyed this video, but you know, all of you, you don't like my videos enough. You are so selfish. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm just kidding. You're not selfish at all. I just hope you have a great day, but just wanted to play around with what that toxic messaging would feel like at the end of a video. Thanks for tuning in.